an old Sicilian custom originating in the home, where people were invited to share food and camaraderie. St. Joseph is the protector of the family, and the fiber bean is our lucky bean. Here is Father Tarantino to tell you more. These altars are often given as a special expression of thanksgiving to St. Joseph for favors granted. It might have been a loved one who was very sick and survived. It might have been during a time of war for the safe return of a son or child. So, the St. Joseph altar always given on the feast day of St. Joseph, March 19th, as an expression of gratitude for his protection, his favor, especially upon one's family and one's neighborhood. Look at those beautiful garlic wreaths. Garlic is a main ingredient in Italian food. Here's how fiber bean grows. The beans are roasted, blessed, and then are used as our lucky bean. It's a pretty plant. A Codoni plant, that's the artichoke plant, is usually displayed at the door to indicate that there is an altar in this house. Michael and Glenda have all the traditional foods of, on the altar, such as lobsters, crab meats, baklava, that's the dried codfish, but no meat. Glenda has statues she obtained from Fatima. Each altar has a personal touch. This altar is their thanksgiving for spiritual and material gifts granted to the family. That's a cute cake. Here is the Elanian Club and the Greater New Orleans Italian Culture Society. Working together, they are baking for the piazza, which is located on Padre Street in New Orleans. They are baking cuchidatis. That's the Italian fit cookie. It's the cookie everybody wants on St. Joseph Day. The Italian fit cookie is the signature cookie of the oak. This working together turns out to be a social activity. Someone asked me, how do you describe an Italian Sicilian? Well, true Sicilians are warm and vivacious people. We have a zest for life and family, and our love is best expressed through our appreciation for fine foods. This is our way to show love to all. If you go to a true Sicilian home, the first thing they do is ask if you like something to eat or drink. You will always find friendly, caring, and loving people. The younger generation is encouraged to come and learn so that the tradition can be carried on, as you can see. Now we are going to show you how to start to make the cookies. This is family and friends that are making the dough. Right now, well, we do about 600, uh, total about 600 pounds of dough, which would, that, that equals out to about uh, what I call about 22, uh, 20 gallons of garbage cans filled up with cookies, so that's, that's how I equate it. 22 garbage cans of uh, cookies, that's how much uh, we get out of 600 pounds of dough. It's all dietetic, right? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no cholesterol, though. <laughs> what goes in next? Uh, what goes in next is baking soda and Crisco. Baking soda. And our uh, two main cooks are Stella Mantia and my sister Elvira Uveniti, who uh, have the secret ingredients and the know how. Last week, well, last week they uh, they made uh, pinoladas at Stella's house, and that's done. About uh, two months of uh, preparation to go into the St. Joseph Hall. They 
They are making the dough just like you would do at home. You remember, they are making much more. Yeah, liquid's coming up. Much more. Now the wet ingredients will go into with the dry ingredients. For long? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's, it's happening. You have to use your hands sometimes. The, the thick cakes are the most complicated and most difficult to make because uh, there's a lot of preparation that goes involved in the, in the thick cakes. You know, there's about 12 ingredients that goes into it, besides figs that need to be cut and uh, uh, if you call it squeezed or mashed up. And I don't want to give away all the ingredients, but there's uh, there's uh, orange marmalade, there's honey, there's... I don't want to give all the ingredients. I'm going to stop there, Stella. You're about 10 minutes to cook. To cook 10, 15 minutes. It's, uh, 10, 15 minutes. And they'll be ready. You gotta watch it, you don't overdo them. If you overdo them, they get too brown for the horn. Have we ever burned any? Oh, <laughs> but we eat the mistakes. They burned them on purpose. Down on the throat. Oh, yeah. Okay, come on. Tomorrow, when? This is not a finished product. They're gonna put icing and color and make a little design on them before they're finished. Then they have, they'll have to cool first, then they put the icing on. Some ladies get together and design and bake artistic cookies. They do this from figs and dough. These are the symbols that adorn the steps of the altar. This is called fancy work. This lady is making two hearts. She will put the symbol of the Sisters of St. Joseph on them. Like no other place, New Orleans celebrates this Sicilian tradition by making religious symbols and seasonal items, such as Easter baskets and Pupa Caloras. That's a colored hardball egg wrapped in dough and baked. Many religious symbols represent the lives of the Holy Family. Here we have St. Joseph's sandals, St. Lucy eyes, and the Easter basket, which represents new life. Very beautiful. And now we go into the oven. Here's that oven again. I hope it works this time. It's hard to pull out sometimes. Here is a fish, if you can get it out the oven. The fish is a Christian symbol and also is a palm. This is the table set for the Holy Family at the Sisters of St. Joseph on Mirabeau in New Orleans. Some people donate foods, money, and many items as a way of taking part in the altar. Many altars put out their own cookbooks. There are many cakes and wines and flowers on the altars. As you can see, it's quite beautiful. The Italian biscotti, that means cookie, are of many kinds. Some are sesame cookies, as you can see there, almond cookies, clove cookies, fucidatis, ammonia cookies, dead man bone cookies, and tutus. Oh my goodness, I'm getting, I'm gaining weight just talking about all these cookies. There's a choo choo cookie also, which is delicious, and an Amy's cookie, a cherry chocolate. And all of these cookies are iced and stored till ready to use. The pingelata, let's see if I can, there's a pingelata next to the lamb. That's, a, that's little strips of dough cut and fried and made in haystack. Here's another pingelata. And it's quite delicious. Now we're at the steps of the altar, and as you can see, all the beautiful fancy work. And here it says, he will provide. And as you can see on the altar, he has provided just many beautiful breads and cookies and designs. And here's the petition box, the box where you can ask a favor of St. Joseph. Uh, and blue cookies and Easter eggs and even bread made of, of, with a wheat design. And the basket work is just quite lovely. These ladies really took their, 
uh, time and really made beautiful designs. That's quite lovely. Naturally, there's a lot of candles on the altar and cakes. St. Lucy eyes. And the large bowl has a medica in it. That's breadcrumbs toasted with olive oil and sugar mixed in it. This is used over the Melanese gravy. The medica represents St. Joseph's sawdust since he was a carpenter. This is the famous fiber bean that saved the Sicilians from famine. And um, this is the bean that, that the Italians ate. And one thing I remember as a young boy was going to St. Joseph altars. My earliest memory was when I was about four or five years old, our next door neighbor. She produced this magnificent altar in her front room. I remember being wonder-eyed as I saw the fancy breads the cakes, and saying, what is this all about? A procession and mass opens the celebration of St. Joseph. Here we are at St. Joseph Church in Gretna, Louisiana. This church is called the Mother Church of the West Bank. <coughs> this church is on the National Register and is one of the oldest on the West Bank. In honor of our patron saint, St. Joseph, this church serves over 3,000 people at its altar. Father Carabella will be celebrating the Mass. Let us stop for a moment and listen. About three years ago, the American bishops uh, came out with a new book of blessings that priests use. This is to bless uh, such articles as schools, churches, gymnasiums, uh, scapulars and rosaries, religious articles, images, uh, automobiles, boats, name it as all kind of blessings in there. And for the first time that I'm aware of, there is a special blessing given for a St. Joseph's altar. What they call St. Joseph's Table. And it's really a very nice blessing. Uh, it includes the Gospel account of St. Joseph uh, and Mother being the protector uh, of the Holy Family, the Litany to St. Joseph, uh, and then the Prayer of Blessing, which reminds that it is a spirit of thanksgiving and charity that the St. Joseph's Altar, St. Joseph's Table, uh, is offered in. We ask the blessing of Almighty God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit upon all who have helped in the creation and the perpetuation of this great custom of the altar of St. Joseph, as we also ask God's blessing on all of those here and all of those who will be helped by these altars at this place and throughout our city. We beg God to bless all of the Italo-Americans nation of Italy and all of those who are their friends and benefactors throughout the world. May Almighty God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit descend upon you, remain with you forever. Amen. Traditional St. Joseph meal is meatless because it is during the Lenten season. You always have fish, redfish, a lobster, of course the pasta which is being served right now, which is called pasta milanesa, it, many types of vegetables, here again meat and table. This is called fried carduni, this is the artichoke plant, it has the texture of celery.
I guess if there can be any comparison for the St. Joseph altar for the people of Sicilian heritage to our traditional American celebrations, it would be Thanksgiving because it is always given, the altar is, as an act of Thanksgiving to St. Joseph, reaching out in hospitality to the poor and the needy. We hope that you've enjoyed this presentation on the special characteristic of New Orleans, our gratitude to St. Joseph for the people of Sicilian background.